Welcome back. The next piece of my setup is going to be the Z-Wave. Now that one's a little trickier. Uh, it's a little tedious. However, unlike X10, where X10 you need to know all your devices, walk around, at least know what the codes are. Uh, Z-Wave, once you program it, program it into the controller and you include it in your Z-Wave network, you can read it into Homes here. It's really nice. Uh, the only thing is you still need to know what is what and have it at least figured out what node is what room and what device. So the first thing we're going to do now, as I've said before, I've had my machine up and running, but not for a year, year and a half. I want to wipe all my Z-Wave config. The only way I can do that is we're going to have to install the Z-Wave plugin. So we'll go ahead, we'll come in here to Z-Wave, download and install. Walked away real quick just to look at my uh, Digi 4 port. Alright, so this is correct. Z Troller is still on COM6. So let's go ahead and set that up. So, first thing we're going to do is enable. As you see, we always have to enable the plugins. Now we will come over here. We will go to Controller Management. We have Now, uh, I had this in here before. In this database, normally, um, not sure how we would delete it from here. All right, so not the best. Let's see, can we delete it? Yeah, let's do that. There we go. Okay, so we're back to how I was hoping it would be. So add interface, give it a name. All right. Submit. Okay. Here's all the devices. Now I don't have a ZNet, which does support Z-Wave Plus. I have no Z-Wave Plus items at this time, so my Z Troller works just great for me. Com6. We hit Add. That tells you right here. Click it to enable it. We'll go look at the log. Alright, looks like it removed all my old devices. Alright, so here we go. Let's go back into the controller. Expand. As you notice, here we go. So, there's other options you can do. But for now, what I want to do is I want to back up this interface. Okay, so backed it up. Now what we're going to do is erase this interface, create a new network. I'm doing this, like I said, just because I need to start from scratch. All right. It still has all these here. It's, uh, shouldn't find any, I'm hoping. Uh, cool. The list of devices is empty. So if we go back to Z Wave controller, expand, expand. There we go. Nodes in this controller. Um, I believe this is actually the Z Troller itself. So now we can go ahead and we can walk around and we have to include all of our items into our Z-Wave network. Now if you have a Z-Net, I don't know 100% sure, but I believe you can leave it in place. Walk around and I guess from your phone or laptop you would hit include and you would hit the device and the device would come right on in. So for now, we're going to go ahead and start adding everything. Alright, so here's my... ZW, my, my Z-Wave thermostat. Um, I always had a problem getting this thing to configure in, so let's give it a try. If you hit system, you hold this 
middle button for a couple seconds. You have to go down to there, RF10. All right, so now I have my Z-Troller in hand. So we're gonna need to change this from a zero to a one. So we'll come down, we'll hit add, we'll come up. Now it's been a while since I've added devices. I'm not sure if I have to hold that button or not. Try this again. I'm going to hold and change number. All right, it went in that easy. Okay, so I have to hold it. So there we go. We would change that to a zero to remove it, and same thing, you have to hold the delete button. All right, so it should be a RF20. We're going to add that. Um, Actually, I think it was a zero last time, so we're good. All right, done. That's it from there. Okay, next up is an Intermatic uh, Z-Wave outlet, which is the top. So we'll do it again. We'll hold the button. We'll click it. Hold. There we go. She is now in. It's that simple, that easy. Here we have the new Jaxco GE uh, Z-Wave dimmer. We'll go ahead and see if we can add this. All right, that added just fine. While I'm here, what I really like about the switch is, as you can see, lights dim down, lights dim up. If you hold it, I also control the fan. Now, dimmer switch you're supposed to, I don't know. We tap it down, everything goes off. Tap it up, everything including the fan comes on. My kids, they don't like the noisy fan. So they do that. Turn it off. Turn on. It remembers the last stage. Very nice. All right. Here's a Jasco GE um, on off switch on the left. On the right is my X10 toggle links. I like them a lot better. If you look, you can see the size difference in the toggle. Now, people that know about this switch obviously see there's a problem with it. My kids have a habit of slamming switches. I gotta take the switch apart, they pop the circuit board out of it. So anyway, let's go ahead, let's add this one. We hold, turn it on, there we go. You also hear the relay. Okay. Here is a HA20C Intermatic light switch, Z-Wave. They're okay, they have a dim rate that can't be adjusted. I really don't like that, but let's go ahead and add this. Hold, tap, there we go. That's in. See the dim rate? And this switch also, there are three LEDs and a normal bulb. You can see the second one in from the left. That way I can still be able to dim them. Laundry room. All right, second floor laundry. Here's the Aeon Labs. Um, Z-Wave switch and power monitor. Let's go ahead. We're going to hit add and hit the power button. All right. That's it. She's programmed in. Hard to see. In the garage, I control track lights with an Intermatic appliance module. Let's go ahead and add it. Come on. All right, and it went. All right, so now that I've reconnected my Z Troller back to my network, I ran around the house and programmed some other items. I just showed you some different various types. These Intermatic items, they got liquidated because they stopped making them. They actually went really cheap, um, and I see why. Uh, like I said, the HA20C light switch, you can't program it. I actually had, I used to have one in my powder room where you saw the dimmer one I have now. People would hit it up, hit it down, like people didn't know because they're just hitting it because they're trying to get the light on. So that's kind of annoying, uh, but it's tolerable. Uh, the outlets, I've actually had two now. I just, during this video, I had to actually replace the one in my son's bedroom 
because I use them to control Halloween and Christmas lights, and then he didn't tell me that it isn't working. So, anyway, let's go ahead. We're going to go back into Controller Manager to refresh the page. All right, now we need to import new node info. So, we're going to hit start. All right, so 13 devices. The thermostat was always the biggest pain for me since I've gotten it. I've programmed it like three times trying to figure it out previously, so it's been a while. All right. So it's going out there finding all the information about them. All right, so that is done. Let's do let's refresh the page. There we go. There's all of our nodes. Now we're going to do a optimize network. From what I'm reading on the forums, you only need to do an optimize and then a full optimize. What this will do is this will have each item go out and just look for its neighbors. So the more Z-Wave items you have, the stronger the network will be. I do have a, a lot in my closet I need to install. I have a whole big parts bin. I'll get to them eventually, but for now I haven't bothered. Also, the outlets and the appliance modules, I left them on. So that way they can be notified. If they're off, probably won't be seen here. Alright, optimization complete. There was no return route, so now it's gotten fully optimized. Before I had my thermostat like the sixth item in, this time I wanted it in the beginning, just that's why I wiped everything and started over. So I could also do the video too, but I wanted to change it up. Like I said, Z-Wave is very nice. The only thing I, that hesitates me from replacing a lot of my X10 items, uh, I have X10, two, there's a couple things. One, the outlets. There's only a single top controlled outlet. I actually have X10 duplex outlets. It'll control both, top and bottom. And as a trailer wire, what's really nice with that is I actually put one of them in my basement and I ran it to two normal standard outlets that are out front and are my Halloween outlets and I can control them from one house code and I can also control inside simultaneously. The other thing is when you use like X10 appliance or lamp modules you can just plug them in walk away with them. You don't have to worry about anything when you're done with the holiday or whatever you're doing. Z-Wave you need to remove, you need to re-optimize. You, know, you could break the network if the stuff isn't reachable and can really create delays. Alright, let's go ahead and go to device management. Let's see. All right. All right. So I see some Z Wave here. We're going to filter out on uncheck everything. We're going to, oh, there's a whole mess of Z Wave. All right. Actually, it'd be quicker just to do this. All right. We'll leave the plug in. Type thermostat. Um, don't know what th these two are. We'll leave them. Oh, actually, want to leave that. All right. Click off. Here we go. All right. So as you see, my whole thermostat grouped as one big grouping. So it's already being seen. It's communicating. So my cooling set point, energy, heat heat set point. So all this is good. We're on fan is on auto. Go ahead and put her on heat. There we go. That's it. It's nice and clean. Uh, so these switches, I can actually do the two JASCOs because I only have two installed. So we're going to call this porch lights. Alright, that's all we have to change. You don't want to touch anything else. 
you can rescan, remove, yeah, fully optimize. You can do different things. Interval, current interval for polling, 20 minutes. So the one problem I have, the other problem I have with some of these is I need to poll quicker. The reason is I, I had so I had an X10 switch here that died on me. And my kids, like I said, they already broke one of my X10 switches because they slammed the switches. But during the day, they'll run upstairs, they'll turn both lights on. I guess the foyer's a little dark. I mean, you know, it's not bright, bright, bright. And they'll turn all the lights on. But I had a job in homes here that would say, if it's daytime and this light's on, turn it off. And there's no way for these GE Jascos to really know that they're on unless you uh, poll it. So let's go... Alright, I want to go back in here because I don't know if I clicked anything. Alright, so... And... Well, so also here's the Aeon Labs switch, power watts. Alright. I'll call it washing machine. Alright. Node 16. So room and floor. I guess we could change them. Let's give that a shot. So floor, second, room, laundry room. Done. Alright. So we can do that with all this to change all of them. Uh, let's come back down. Jasco switch multi-level. Lights. First floor. Powder room. Alright. Now let's take a look. The thermostat is here. Powder room lights, laundry room, porch lights, first floor, front porch. Done. So, I mean, that's really it. Yeah, so now, later on, I'll, I'll record setting up some events and how I have them going. Um, for now, though, I do. Actually, I wanted to come back in here. So, I'm not sure if this is going to be too aggressive. But, the front porch light is on in five minutes. I would like it turned off. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. See, it's also under settings. See what we have under here. It's a contacting switch. All right, so here we go. Set LED. Well, there's no LEDs on this. So we don't have to worry about that. Switch reverse, top paddle turns, load on. So they say if with these GE Jascos, if you... Not, not the GE Jasco, sorry, Zoos, Z-O-O-Z. -O -O they make a switch and they use the GE Jasco auxiliary add-on switch. And that you have to flip physically in the box. I don't know if this will work for that or not. Uh, all on, all off, respond to all. So let's see, name in node, get name, what do we got? Alright, well nothing came back. So we could probably set it what it seems like. I got to look at why I'd want to do that, what benefit, what not. Um, Alright, so and here's some other options. Use your own risk. We're not going to touch that. So, that is pretty much it. Um, so, as you see, some items, this is pretty neat because it'll do kilowatt hours, how many watts, turn the switch on or off, turn it on. It probably would have shown on after a poll was done. Uh, what's the poll on that? No poll. So we'll set that to every... 
I would use the little bar chart here. Every 30 minutes we'll poll it. Uh, let's see. Test connectivity. Alright, it looks good. So that's it. So as you see, Z-Wave is in here. Uh, now i got to run around the house and turn stuff on and off as I go. Um, actually, let's see. If I do on, off, because I actually have a switch right here, and that is it. Lights, basement, I'm right outside the utility room. So there we go. Done. So, yeah, you can go through, set them all up, get them where they need to be, and they're a little easier to understand. We'll also go ahead and launch this real quick. So now we should see more in here. Now, let's see, climate, look at that. Worked right off the bat. You can set current temperature, says zero, not sure why. Um, maybe things still need to settle. Because we, uh, let's see, current, well, oh, there we go, <laughs> current temperature zero, sea wave, let's do, do every 10 minutes, submit, test connectivity, optimize, not sure that's really going to matter. Go ahead and exit. We'll go back in. Climate. There we go. Okay. So I'm not sure if I need to poll or not. I'll have to look into that more. But right off the bat, like I said, HS Touch. A lot of people complain it's ugly. Eh, it's not great. That's fine. I mean, it works. Yeah. Events. Got got all my events in here. got our devices. I still have to get rid of all these node items. Uh, let's see. Let's go, let's see, first floor dining room. Let's actually just do all. Oh, somebody set smoke detector off yesterday. So porch lights, I know this is the um, out front the Jasco. Notice no dimmer because it wasn't set up as a dimmer. On and off. That's it. Nice and easy. So the other thing, it's holiday season now, so I'm not going to do it unless I change the bulbs out. But one of the things I like doing is I like doing an event where at sun sunset, turn the lights on. At sunrise, turn them off. Yeah, you start automated things. And eventually, you don't really have to do anything. You don't need to be in the interface. So I hope that shed a little bit of light for some people on some of the things you can do with Z-Wave. And until I do another one, I'll talk to you later.